says it's still setting up. So we will wait and see. Hopefully you guys can't hear the. All right. I believe we are live right now. So for those of you who are joining on Facebook, thank you for joining this live interview with Cattle ID. We have Nick and Katie here, and we're going to talk about three ways to improve ranch communication. So some of you have heard about Cattle ID. I've shared about it on my page before, but to get started, I would like Nick and Katie to please take some time and introduce yourself and talk about your roles in the beef industry. And I'm going to go ahead and tag a few people who are wanting to watch live with us. So Nick, how about you go first? Sounds good. Shay, thanks for having us with you tonight. Uh, my name is Nick Green. I uh, live just north of Lincoln and have kind of worked in all different areas of the cattle industry um, for the last few years. My main focus has been kind of in feedlot. And so this new venture kind of getting more uh, into cow calf has been been interesting. Uh, my wife and I background uh, a few calves here at our place and just love uh, being a part of this industry and getting to uh, enjoy this way of life. Well, awesome. We're glad to have you here, Nick. How, Katie, how about yourself? Yeah, so I'm originally from Edgar, Nebraska. I'm a sixth generation cattle producer. Um, a lot of cow calf through that. Um, I went to the university where I actually got to know Nick quite well before joining a team working with him. Um, and that's where I met my husband, Ty. And Ty is from Northeast Nebraska. And that is where we've settled down is at Bloomfield. Um, we are currently part of his parents' cow calf operation. We've started our own. Um, we're also part of a backgrounding. Mm -hmm. And then we grow crops as well. So your generic corn, soybeans, and alfalfa. Um, back home, my brother and I raised seed stock red Angus cattle. Um, still run a few with mom and dad. And mom and dad are running commercial cow calf as well. So that's me. Well, that is exciting. Thank you both for being on this live podcast interview tonight, which is a treat for our listeners because they'll be able to ask questions in the comments, et cetera, if they'd like to. But while listeners are hopping on and enjoying, we're not going to waste anyone's time and we're going to kind of get rolling. So with the conversation today, we're really going to be talking about ranch communication because that is something your team is very passionate about. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm you know, the company you work for is all about improving ranch communication. So to start off, when you're working with producers through the new stockyard group, what are some of those communication challenges producers are facing on their operations today? Well, I'm sure Katie could give plenty of examples, but um, being as, you know, ag is mostly a family operation. You can imagine uh, working with your family every day doesn't always uh doesn't always go great with communication or you, people think they can read each other's minds um but uh so any any tools that uh we can bring to the table to to help with that communication um you know we we want to ensure the longevity of these operations and something we talk a lot about is honestly uh how do we minimize you know arguments uh, and things like that as we uh, are talking about these tools uh, that we're developing. And um, there's plenty of examples. Um, Katie's usually has some colorful ones um, as to what, what communication looks like uh, in their operation. Okay, Katie, so what are some common communication challenges you see, whether that's your own operation or when visiting with other producers, because you're heavily involved in the ranching industry? <laughs> Yes, definitely. So I think we can all attest to um, dad being very particular about where a calving book is supposed to be. So for example, I'm not saying what family, but maybe one that I'm close to related to that might have like, you know, been raised in. Uh, we have a calving book that stays in the side by side and that's where it belongs. And sometimes another person on that operation wants to update the herd record. So they're up to date at all times. Um, and then the calving book doesn't get put back. And then when it, you know, it, uh, dad needs to go out and check cows and update his calving book. And then there's no calving book in the side by side. 
argument A, right? So ways to prevent that is have something that is both trackable that everyone can just continue to update and take care of and not lose. Um, one of my favorite topics on why we need to have good record keeping and improved communication is because you want to have something that won't get lost or misplaced. Um, I used to be the brunt of where did you put the notebook that has the bond pasture information in it or what happened to the notepad that you used? And I'd say, I've started 17 different notepads over the last three years with the same similar information and I don't know where the MMR and that's why I have to keep starting a new one and I'm really sorry. <laughs> so not only is it like communication, but it's, it's where you're keeping something that you need to communicate and making sure it's a place where everyone can find it. Um, so having that central location and, and if something gets moved, knowing why or when. So what, you know, we're talking about communication and you really brought up calving records. And that's really the basis of some of those basic records that all ranchers are really keeping to some degree, whether it's just this cow calved or all the way down to what is the birth weight of this calf. And so what is the impact of if communication goes wrong, misinformation is spread. What is the impact profitability wise for an operation? I mean, what can go wrong there? One of the big ones that I've continued to hear about is treatment of calves out on the range. Um, so where you're keeping your, like, um, your records for respiratory illnesses, your pink eye, your, uh, foot rot and, and what your treatment date was. And if you have a chronic that's gone at three times, well, are we sure we treated it? Cause I know I saw him sick and, and who treated it and when. So having a good way for you to track who has done what, when, um, is pretty essential to a take the best care of the animal that you have. And B we know the cow calf industry is tough. You don't want to be giving excess medication where you don't need it because it's, it's not profitable, it's not good for the animal, and what's not good for the animal is going to come around again to not be profitable. Okay, so today we were going to share, you know, three tips, three specific tips to help improve rancher communication, and you've kind of touched on them already, but would you kind of bullet point and talk through those three tips, Nick and Katie? Sure, yeah, uh, I, I think three is good, it's kind of easy to remember. Um, and, and like you said, Katie's already alluded to some of them, but having some consolidated records, um, is key, uh, to be able to, you know, pass them easily between different family members and different people within the operation. It's nice and concise. Um, that accessibility that Katie's talking about, is it in the side-by-side? -side? Is it in the shop? Is it in the house at the office? You know, is there a better way? Uh, to, to have them be accessible all the time. Um, and then the timeliness uh, of those treatments and things like that. If you're getting that documented right away, are you getting that information passed on when somebody else in the operation goes to check calves uh, a day or two later? Is this animal still sick? Did we treat it? Or is this something new? So the timeliness of those records, um, especially you know throughout the summer on grass and things like that's pretty important. Okay, so to kind of recap that, we have one, consolidated records, two, keeping them accessible to all people who are working on the operation in some capacity, and three, being timely with those records. Is there anything else you'd like to share on those th three, Katie? I love growing up, growing up in the cow-calf industry. Um, I was really fortunate to grow up with a family. We didn't yell. I can count on one hand how many times I got chewed out shoot side. Um, and I think a lot of that just comes down to the personality of my family. And I, I know that I'm super fortunate in that. I think the next part of it is that we had good diligent record keeping and everything was clear and concise on what we needed. Um, so keeping consolidated records that were accessible to all of us makes a big difference on not only the success of the operation, but the succession of the operation. So if you can make it so your kids continue to fall in love with the cow-calf industry or in the ranch, 
they're more likely to come back and continue this tradition that we all three of us are proud of being part of. Um, accessible to all your operators and workers, it was not uncommon for dad to call my brother or I and say, we need to go check a pasture. Well, I am not my dad and I don't have his amazing brain of knowing all 30 pairs that are supposed to be in this pasture over here. I need to have my list because if I can only find 28, I need to be able to check off who's missing. And along with the timely record keeping, my husband and I have this discussion regularly. I'm, and with this new job, I, I have an opportunity to be able to be more hands-on with the operation. But before that, if I was going out and I kept seeing things sick, I'd say, okay, Ty, we need to get on this. He goes, Katie, I took care of that already. I'm like, well, if we'd write that down, we'd know that. So, so finding all those parts so every person can feel comfortable and successful in the operation, like I said, is going to lead to not only success for the operation, but succession within, which I think is a lot of parents and families goal is to keep the tradition going that we are truly proud of. I really appreciate how you tie the tradition aspect into that because that is big for a lot of family businesses but family businesses are businesses and within business we need proper communication yes 100 percent. And, and you can be a farming family and you can be a family that farms and there there's some different terms there and it's a lot of it comes down to how well you can get along and if you can improve how well people are getting along through a few subtle changes it's going to have that ripple effect to make that big wave of just positive change for you and your family and your operation. Absolutely. Nick, did you have something you were going to say? I think I cut you off there. Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. Uh, I think uh, to kind of build on Katie's point of succession, I think that's something that everybody in the ag industry can get behind. Um, there's a lot of, you know, succession happening right now. And People, people in this industry are getting older and a lot of people are coming back to operations. And something I guess that, that I would add as a note uh, for record keeping that you know w- would be helpful, I think, to uh, build some buy-in from the younger generation. You know, we, some of these guys uh, uh, have been doing this for a long time, you know, and they've got it, a system and they got it figured out. But when a son or a daughter comes back to an operation and that, you know, they, are bringing up a, a new idea or or a new something to track, you know, it might be worth just humoring them um, on a new new uh, point of emphasis on the operation to track something. And then they have the ability to have some ownership in those records as well, because this piece, piece of the records is theirs. And, um, it's just kind of a good camaraderie builder intergenerationally, I think, when that can happen. Absolutely. So I kind of want to shift gears here because you guys have been very gracious with sharing information on why it's important to have good communication and those three tips on how to do that. And that's consolidated records, except keeping those records accessible to all operators and timely recording, because we can never say those three enough, I know. So with that, let's talk about, you know, how you as the new stockyard group with your product cattle ID are do helping producers do all three of those things. So talk a little bit about what cattle ID is. Um, So cattle ID is trying to solve a lot of the issues that cow calf guys are seeing. Um, And I've said it before with Nick, but I love a lot of the technology that's come into agriculture and I don't feel like enough has been invested into the cow calf guy and and I'm someone that loves to eat steak you can ask anyone like we just had a meeting this week and what did I order guys actually all of us did in order for us to get that beef you have to have the cow calf producer producing it from the ground it's where we start so we have started cattle id as first a calving book app um this app is very family friendly. I will say Um, everyone on the operation can see what other people are inputting and makes it so there is a clear profile on an animal. Um, And my favorite thing is I don't have to have cell phone service to use it. So I'm able to be out in the field getting my job done. Once I'm back in the house on the Wi-Fi, it's going to upload back up and sync across the devices that are logged into the account. You are able to keep your vaccine history on this. You can export the data into an email. So if you have registered livestock along with your commercials, um, you can take the calving information, birth weight, weaning weight, the cow, 
um, and put all of that into an Excel sheet that you will then just like input the data fields as they match up onto your breed association. So there's a lot of things here that solve problems for other people. Like, like if I'm going on a two o'clock check and my husband's doing a four o'clock check, I can see the three calves that he already noticed. So it's not me saying, hey, make sure you pay attention to these. Like we have those notes right away. If you're having to give electrolytes to calves, you can put in their notes section, what they were given, when, how much. Any of that information that the next person down the line would need to know, can know it. So that way it's not the same person having to do every single calving check during the night if you guys were so kind as to share those with one another. Um, you can just streamline your communication and maybe you don't have to wake your wife up before her four o'clock check or the husband can get a little bit extra rest because you didn't have to um, help you pull something or get another heifer in. Um, you can just say who's being watched, update, whatever, um, and just make your communication a little bit easier. Maybe avoid a couple of the arguments that might pop up. Well, thank you for that. Nick, now from my understanding, there's a really cool groups feature too. Would you talk about how a lot of producers are finding value in this groups feature that you offer through Cattle ID? Well, I think we hear a lot um, just within our industry that, well, I'm not real tech savvy. Um, and so we really appreciate that. And, you know, we're, we're not the most tech savvy people either. And so we really try to build something that you don't have to be tech savvy to use. Um, it just kind of, it's simple, um, but it works. And I think the groups functionality is a really good example of that because it's kind of this open-ended uh, sort of piece of the application that you can use in any way that you want, you know, and in our operation, we kind of use the groups as lots as we're backgrounding and things like that. But if you want to track pasture rotations, um, you could keep your cows grouped in different pasture groups. Um, if you want your cows grouped by age you can have two-year-old cows four-year-old cows seven-year-old cows uh, and kind of group them that way and there's there's a coal you know use it as a coal list there, there's just this endless uh amount of things that you could group your cattle to track them by um, and it's really helpful that an animal can be in multiple groups as well so you can filter your herd into all sorts of different ways, you know, different owners, you know, Katie can have a group for her cows and her brother can have a group and Ty can have a group and then they can all be in pasture groups uh, and, and track them all, even if they're running together. Well, I and think that's really cool. Really nicely with the groups is like, if you need to do a consistent note. So if you have all your cows in one pasture and you have them listed in that group, you can do a note for every single one, whether it's when the bull was turned out or the bull was pulled, or if you had to take out mineral this day, you can pull up one of those animals and see it right away. So you're even able to start figuring out some of your costs per head based on inputs that you're doing. Sorry to interrupt you, Shay. No, absolutely. No, no problem at all. So really what you're saying is, however, I have my operation figured into my mind and grouped up into my mind throughout the year. I can even have that on the app. So it's not a huge adjustment. It's just in front of me in one place where my mom and dad, and if we had an intern, could all access it as well. Yeah, or if you like swear 8258s down in the bond pasture and you try to tell dad a few times that she's actually in the reds pasture and there's just no eye to eye there. Maybe you could like pull up the app and say, I think she's over here, dad. You just have your little, you have your paper trail with you. You don't have to go back and find the notebook. <laughs> can you take so pictures too? Can yes, you put you pictures can. of cattle? Um, and that's something that people have really started to enjoy. I like it from a seed stock perspective of where you have a calf that hits the ground and he's just smoking, like, check out that hip. Look at that bone. Like you're, you're pumped. Your dad's at the sale barn and he said, you will not believe this bull calf that hit the ground. Let me text my son and get a picture. You're scrolling through all the pictures of your grandkids and everyone else on your phone, right? Or you can just get onto cattle ID and look up that calf's profile and it's linked right there, right away across devices. So whether it's you, your dad, your brother, your wife, your cousin, whoever is in your operation involved in it, they can pull up that calf's information and have those wow shots ready to go. Well, that's awesome. So Nick, do you want to speak to like, what are some of the main outcomes current cattle ID users have experienced? 
Yeah, I think really it all stems back to that communication, um, being able to track some of this and and access it anywhere. Uh, like Katie's just alluding to, if you're at the sale barn or um, you went to town for something, but you stopped in at the vet and you wanted to make sure you had, oh, what did we give them uh, for this treatment or when's the last time they got treated or what vaccine did we give them last? Was it Merck? Was it Zoetis? Do we want to keep it consistent? Um, having that on your phone all the time and, and being able to just pick it up on a whim and find that information um, is really, really pretty handy. Well, that's great. So as we wrap up this live podcast interview today, for those interested, Katie and Nick gave you three fabulous tips, but the new Stockyard group is wanting to share more free tips with you. So in the comments of this post, comment cattle ID, and we will make sure that that free PDF gets sent to you with extra tips and information on how to improve your cattle keeping records or cattle, yeah, cattle records, or keeping your cattle records. It's kind of a mouth, mouthful, I guess. So comment cattle ID if you want more free information on t- and tips on improving ranch communication in general and cattle record keeping. And before we wrap up, Nick and Katie, is there anything else you want to share or any message you want to really hit home before we sign off and tell people where they can go for more information? I was talking to another producer today, just feeling out um, not only if cattle ID is a good fit for their operation, but what their issues are right now. And and it seems like a lot of people that have multiple generations getting involved, um, you have the ones that are wanting to keep better records and you have the ones that really trust their pen and paper. Um, I told them, while I hope cattle ID is a good fit for you, what I truly want is just what's best for your operation because those are the things we need to, like I said earlier, continue the tradition of raising livestock. Um, So whether cattle ID is a fit for you, I I love to brainstorm with people. Nick does. All of our team will gladly sit down with you, um, see what program could be a good fit for you, what ways you can improve X, Y, Z on your operation. And and if we can help out, of of course, we're going to do our best. Um, Anytime we have a chance to just improve the things around us. Every single member of this team is highly involved in that and invested. So feel free to reach out anytime. And and if we can help get your dad a little more tech savvy or get your mom more comfortable or make those spreadsheets that you're filling out at the end of the year a little bit easier, that's what we're here for. Nick, do you have any final thoughts? Yeah, I'll echo those same uh, sentiments that we love problem solving. Um, we We love this industry. We love talking to people in this industry. Um, and as much as we want cattle ID to be the perfect fit for you, um, I also think it's, it's a fair point that it can be a part of the operation without being total solution. Um, and you're not going to get your dad or your grandpa to move away from a paper calving book right away. But I think that it's still helpful to have uh, both, um, as you make a transition. And so don't let, uh, don't let sort of the way it's always been be the reason not to uh, explore something new Um, and we'd love to just talk with with anyone further about it um, to find out if it's if it's the right fit for you well thank you very much to both of you for joining this call on a tuesday night um, and taking time away from your families and uh, sharing with my audience i really appreciate it and i know they will too we've had great interaction this evening Um, i've enjoyed watching the numbers come in as far as viewers and so remember if you're still watching or watching the replay be sure to comment cattle id and i'll make sure you get that free pdf with more communication tips for your ranch And in addition to that, the email they should go to is info at newstockyardgroup.com. Correct, Nick? Yep. Well, awesome. You two have a great night. And for everyone watching, have a great night as well. Thanks, Shay. Thank you, Shay.